she had a pretty rough week this week. Amen. But uh, she made it through. Amen. Amen. She made it through. And I, I know there are some others of you that had a kind of challenging week. I heard about some of you. But you made it. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, somebody said when the going get tough, the tough get going. That's right. We don't give up. We look up, rise up, and go up. Hello, somebody. It is so. It is so. It is so. My God. We uh, Last week, I mentioned to you about a uh, uh, illustration I want to do. And I asked for men. I asked for my men to be here because I needed some support from my men. In fact. <laughs> okay, I just had to give my son the head up, heads up on something. Um, but I, I've asked of you, and I, I just want to thank God for those of you. I've asked you to stick with me for at least four weeks. Amen. This is our third week together in this series. Come on, let's just bless God. I, I thank God for you. Amen. I ask you to stick with me at least four weeks, and you're still here. Um, and I said at least four weeks because I didn't want you to think only four. All right. <laughs> but I need minimally four, all right? <laughs> Amen. And um, we're in a series entitled Crossing Over and Changing My Address based on our theme scripture for this year that comes out of Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 31. And so we're going to prepare now to go into the word. And um, at a set time, I'm going to call my men up. So, so now you say, well, what's the qualifications? Well, you just got to know your man. Kind of easy. Uh, you don't have to be a member. Just a man. Uh, and you got to be a little bit able-bodied. Amen. A little bit able body. Got to have something left. You know what I'm saying? Uh -oh. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Praise God. All right. Uh, if you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask you to go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse, uh, chapter, pardon me, 11, verse 31. And then for a support text, we'll just go right to Joshua 1 and 8. Amen. Well, uh, you know, I looked out at y'all. Y'all look pretty good today. Amen. Y'all look as good today as y'all did last week. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody don't look the same every week now. Amen. Hallelujah. Some folk, boy, you see them sometimes. Uh, and this is especially true with women. Especially. Women, sometimes you see them and, man, you know, they look real nice, hair done all nice. Then they change their hair. And you're trying to figure out who is this lady. They still look good, but they just look different. Amen. 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 And, uh, you know, I, I've been caught. In fact, my wife and I, we were at a birthday celebration not too long ago, pastor's birthday celebration. Uh -huh. Well, the pastor had on white, you know, female pastor. Had on white, you know, looking, you know, real nice, her and her husband. And uh, then later, there was some folk up, you know, they, they moving a little bit to the music. And uh, there was this lady out on the floor. She was in black. Uh -huh. And she looked like she could have been the pastor's sister to me. Uh -huh. I said, honey, don't she look like she could be kin to the pastor? Why she said, yes. A little while later, you know, the lady looked at me. I'm trying to be careful because, you know, you a preacher. I can't get in a mess. They looked at me. I looked at her, but I looked away. And, you know, I, but I, I, I'm trying to look at her because she looks more like the pastor than I thought. Looked like they could be twins. Come to find out. And I'm telling my wife, I said, honey, they must be twins, right? She looked. Then after she said, she said, that's the pastor. I said, what? <laughs> she done changed clothes on me. I didn't know it was the same one. 
Hallelujah, boy. I guess they were like twins, same person. Amen. If you would rest upon your feet with me, glory to God. I'm telling you, sometimes folk look different. That's that's my point. Sometimes they just look different. My wife caught it because it was something about a earring or something, wasn't it? Okay, the same something in her hand gave it all, gave it away. You know, my wife caught it. I'm thinking, man, they look a lot alike. All right, all right, all right. What we're going to do is we're going to pray. After I pray, we'll make a faith confession. After the faith confession, I will read the word of the Lord in your hearing. You can feel free to have your seat in his presence thereafter. Let's pray. Father, thank you so very much for loving us like you do above our ability to fully comprehend the depth and the breadth of your love. Thank you for your faithfulness to us all of our lives. And God, thank you for giving us a heart, a mind, opportunity, and the ability to be here in the house of prayer now. I pray, God, that you will have your way in this gathering. I decrease that you, Lord Jesus, might increase. I ask you to send forth your word unchecked and unhindered by any force. I pray that you'll give me clear process of thought clear articulation of speech, and that you, Father, through the perfect ministry of the Holy Spirit, will cause this word to be tailored for each and every life and for every situation, that the word today might find itself as the part of the fabric of our lives, producing before you an acceptable and pleasing fruit in our lives. This is our prayer. I ask it now in Jesus' name. I thank you for it. I believe I receive it. And I declare that none of the harvest is lost. And all in agreement with this prayer said amen, amen. and amen. amen. If you would hold your Bibles up with me and you can just repeat after me. Say, so this is the word of God. It is life to me. And... <laughs> And because of God's faithfulness to his word and my obedience to him in faith, I now walk in love and the blessings of abundant life. While you're still standing, I'm reading from Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 31. King James Version has it recorded this way. For ye shall pass over Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you, and ye shall possess it and dwell therein. Amen. Going over to Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 and verse number 8. Are you there? Amen. King James Version has it. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Amen. If you will, uh, share this topic with me. Crossing over, Crossing over. and changing my address. Amen. Come on again, crossing over, crossing over and changing my address. Amen. Come on and give the Lord a praise. You can feel free to have your seat in his presence. Amen. Crossing over and changing my address. Amen. This, uh, this theme, crossing over and changing my address, coming out of Deuteronomy 11, verse 31, uh, uh, here is the theme for this year for Ark of Jesus Ministries. And uh, I believe that it is a word actually to the body of Christ that God wants us had, and has ordained for us to cross over some things that have been barriers to us really moving into what God has for us. Amen. Amen. I, I, I believe right now that there are many in here and many outside of here 
which know that God has more for them, but for whatever reason, it seemed like something's in the way. Something just keep them from getting their breakthrough. Something is not allowing them to obtain what rightfully is theirs. And, and so we're declaring, and I declare over your life today, those things will not continue to stand in front of you. They will not continue to be a barrier to you receiving what God has for you. Yeah, yeah. So whether we're talking about peace, whatever has been the thing that's been disrupting your peace, it will not continue to disrupt your peace. Right. You're going to be able to walk in peace and enjoy the days God give you and even the nights that you go through. Thank Hello, somebody. Amen. That there are some folk when it comes to relationships, sometimes relationships have been under strain, stress, and struggle. So whether you're talking about between spouses or children or parents or siblings or what have you, maybe even on the job, I'm telling you now, whatever those barriers were that's been standing in your way to keep you from maximizing on what God has for you, those barriers will not continue to stand in your way. If you believe it, come on and tell God thank you. Amen. Somebody's not totally convinced today. Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, you, you can receive this. This is free. Amen. Amen. And, and so uh, God speaks to the children of Israel. He had already promised them uh, this land that flowed with milk and honey. But in order for them to get into the land that flowed with milk and honey, they also had to cross over the Jordan. Amen. And God says, hey, you are going to uh, uh, go in and possess this land. You're going to cross over Jordan, go in and possess this land, and you're going to dwell there. And the possessing mean they take ownership of it. And the dwelling there mean they change their address. So you may have been staying on the other side of uh, uh, blessings that God have for you. And you might have been living in the land of lack. But God said, no, I have sufficiency for you on the other side. It's time to change your address. Amen. It is so. It is so. My objective by the aid of the Holy Spirit is that at the end of this series, You'll recognize that the knowledge of God, trust in God, and obedience to God brings blessings. Amen. 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 Knowledge of God, trust in God, and obedience to God brings blessings. Yes, yes. And, and I asked three questions on last week, and, and the questions were, um, how many own their own home, wanted to own a home. Next question was, how many own their homes free and clear? All right. And then how many own their homes with the bank? All right. right? And uh, I'll just put a pin right here too. If you are a renter, I won't encourage you to buy. You're going to spend the money anyway. Amen. Either way, the money's gone. Amen. But if you purchase after your, and I use the illustration of, and I know everybody probably who are renting, they probably wish their rent was $500, but I'm just going to put that out for the illustration. If you were renting for $500 a week or a month, and you multiply that by a year, you're talking $6,000. Doesn't seem so big until you stay there for 10 years and now you're talking $60,000. For $60,000, you could have bought a house. Hello, somebody. And when you move after 60 years being a renter, all you can take with you is the contents of the house. And chances are, if you had it for 10 years, you may not even want to take all of it. So you leave with precious little. But if that same money was invested in you buying your house and in 10 years you want to move, now you have equity. You can sell your house, get you thousands of dollars 
towards your next house because either way the money's spent, one way it comes back to you, the other way is just bye-bye birdie. Amen. All right? So, so if you're going to pay rent anyway, if, if you're going to pay some place to live, and if you desire a house, I hope you desire a house. If you, if you don't, that's all right. Uh, some folk don't want what they call a headache and all that comes with it because, yes, something will come with it. But, um, but my point here is, even if you own your house free and clear, you don't own your house free and clear absent of some responsibility. Hello. You say, wait a minute, what are you saying, Bishop? I, you know, I own my house. I don't hold nobody nothing. I paid that thing off myself three years ago. Uh -huh. I'm hearing you. Uh -huh. The reality is, if you don't pay the taxes, you won't have a house. That's, right. that, that's just the reality of it. Amen. You say, well, that's with a house. I don't have that problem because I bought some land. I bought some land, and so my land I paid for, I don't owe the bank anything, my land is free and clear. I say, good. But you still have responsibility, and if you do not pay the taxes, you will not have any land. Why did I bring this up? I bring it up because we are simply stewards of what's in the land. We can think we're owners if we want to. You can build the building from the ground up. They excavated. You had a plans drawn. They excavate the ground. They build a skyscraper for you and everything else. Amen. All that is fine. But you still don't own it by yourself. You are a steward. And if you don't pay the taxes, they will have your big building. It is so. So if it's like that in the natural world, how much more is it when it comes to God? Sometimes we get it twisted as if everything that we handle, it really belongs to us. And God doesn't have anything to, to say about it, anything to do about it. We don't want to work for that. <laughs> Hello, somebody. No, no, I, got, I went to school and got my education. I work every day to pay that bill. This is mine. I don't owe God anything. But, but you do. Because you're simply a steward of whatever has been entrusted to your care. Are you hearing today? And sometimes we won't do right by God. Now we're going to pay the mortgage. And we're going to pay the taxes. Because if we don't pay the mortgage, the bank coming to get it. Well, you know, they're not really going to get it. They're just going to have the marshal have you get out of it. <laughs> House going to stay there. Right? Somebody know what I'm talking about. If you if you don't pay the mortgage and the bank foreclose on you, they're going to have a marshal come and make sure you're out of there. Now, you could either get your stuff or leave it in there, but you will be out. When it comes to uh, God, we feel like, what are you going to do? Ah, do you really want to know? Yeah, yeah, but it's time to cross over recognizing that God, I owe you first. Oh, God, yeah, yeah, listen. How many of y'all got cell phones? Uh, smartphone, whatever, flip phone, doesn't matter. Straight phone? Okay, okay, okay. How many of you? You already paid for your phone. You don't owe nothing on it. Or maybe you got an Obama phone. You ain't have to pay for it. <laughs> well, that's what they call them anyway. Listen, if the bill doesn't get paid, you won't be talking to anybody. You just have your phone. Right? We'll pay the telephone man We'll pay the utility company. We'll pay the grocery stores. Come on here. But then when it comes to God, somehow pockets get tight. Woo! But it's time to cross over. Change our dress. We read on last week, 
there in Malachi chapter 3 where the Lord asked the question. He says, shall a man rob God? Yeah. And it, the, 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 the response came said, well, well, how have we robbed you? He said, in tithe and offering. I believe God wants to move us forward, but there are some things we have to do in agreement with what he has said for us to move, make the moves he wants to take us to. Do you know when you pay your bills on time, they give you what they call a good credit score? And your credit score favors you. I mean, if it's good. If it doesn't, it you might want to trade with somebody. It's not easy to do. But you just may want to trade if you don't have a good credit score. Do you know the folk with the worst credit scores pay the biggest interest? They pay the most for the same product. Your credit score good, and you can go and let's say you gotta go to a bank to get funding for your automobile. You can get it for whatever the cost is with no interest when you got good credit. Amen. But when your credit's bad, you may almost pay twice for the same vehicle. Amen. 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 Why? Because that, that type of, of responsibility and accountability gets rewarded. If man, the Bible says if man being evil know how to give good gifts to men, how much more will God when we honor him? How much more? You said, but wait a minute here. A God owns everything. I'm glad you came to that conclusion. That's what I've been saying all the time. It was never yours to begin with. Hello, somebody. We owe God, but we'll say, I trust God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us believe we trust God, right? Amen. We say, oh yeah, I trust God. But what we mean is we like God. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, that's what we mean. And we think like and trust kind of go the same when we're looking at God. But it doesn't. Like is like and trust is trust. So let me see if today we can do an illustration to, to uh, highlight and underscore this reality. So where, where are my men? I need, okay, I need, I need at least eight, ten men to stand and just come on up front. All right, all right. See, see, a picture is worth a thousand words. A picture is worth a thousand words. And, and part of my assignment, according to the word of God, my assignment is to feed you with knowledge and understanding. All right? That, that's my assignment. So by the aid of the Holy Spirit, the complex can be made simple. Part of the thing that holds so many from ever coming to Christ or growing in Christ is that the dots don't seem to connect. Things don't seem to make sense. They heard it preached. They heard it taught. But in the way it was preached and it was taught, it just didn't come together for them. And part, part of my assignment and a grace on my life is to make the complex simple by the aid of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So now, so now, look at this. Oh, this is God. You hear me? That's God. Come on, let's get these men a hand here. Well, what none of them saying? They just, they just bust on up here just like men. Hello, somebody. Amen. 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 So now, so now, what, what I want to underscore here in this illustration is trust. What does trust look like? So, the, would you move that ladder back that way? Right there's good. Oh, 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 not too far. Okay, right there's good. Right there's good. All right, all right. You, you feeling pretty good still? 
I think y'all gotta pray for my men. <laughs> they see that ladder, boy. They're like, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I need I need that ladder to come over this way a little bit. Good, 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 good. All right. Give me about four men lined up right here, and I need four other men on this side facing each other. <laughs> okay. Okay, hold on. You, you, you go back. I'll tell you when to move. <laughs> All right, now. Now. Okay, cool. Okay, I'm liking this. Y'all look like some strong men. <laughs> look like some men that got some muscaloids. Okay. All right. <laughs> his word. We just read in Joshua 1 and 8 says this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night to observe to do all that is written therein Amen. for then you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall have good success. So God says I want you to always be saying what I said. I want you to observe what I said. I want you to do what I said and he said if you'll meditate on that day and night he says you are going to make your own way prosperous and you are going to have good success. So often we want God to prosper what we're doing. We want God to give us good success. But he said I already gave you the formula. What I need you to do is trust what I said so you can see what I promised. Uh, are you hearing? So now, so now, here is here's going to be a picture of trust. Now, yeah. now I need you to almost step. Almost hit. Okay. All right. Now, what what he's got to do? All right. Come on. You might well cross your heart. All right. Ready? All right. Nice and straight. Nice and straight. All right. When when I tell him what he needs to do is this. But he's not going to stop like I did. <laughs> okay, you ready? All right. Let's cross you out. Come on. All right. All right. Go ahead. Just just fall straight back. Straight back. Straight back. <laughs> Come on, get my head. I see he's a happy camera right now that they caught him. Come on, let's give these men a hand. Let's give these men a hand right here. 
Amen. So, so, so what did he have to do? He, what did he have to do? He had to trust that these guys that were below him were going to be there to catch him and they were not going to let him fall to the ground. Are you hearing? You and I have to free fall and trust God's word. We try to play it safe and we won't fall back and say, well, God, this is what you said, so I'm going to trust you. No, no, no. We say, I'm not even getting on the ladder, God. <laughs> you say, no, I'm cool, God. Use them. <laughs> but it's time to cross over and change our dress. I, I, and I, I thank God for his boldness. He probably got it honest. That's my son. Um, <laughs> But I thank God for his boldness because that's not the easiest thing for a person to do, especially being the first time. Now, usually it's easier when somebody else sees that it's been done, then they're more willing to try. But when you're the first one coming out the gate, you know a lot of folk get stuck there. It's like close the gate, just close it. Amen. And God wants us to come to a place of trusting him so much until God, if that's what you say, then that's what I'll do. Come on and give God a praise. So this is not about just liking God. This is about trusting God. When it comes to being a tither, it ought to be an act of trust and love. It so many do it out of duty. They say, like, this is what I'm supposed to do. All right. Well, okay, it is what you're supposed to do. But that's, that's a little challenging. It's not as comfortable outfit to wear. Yeah. It's easier when you just love and you do what you do out of love. Amen? Amen. 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 And, and there's witnesses in this house that can tell you when they started out trying to be a tither, it was a challenge in coming to be a tither. Amen. Amen. Somebody said, well, I, I got bills of my own. In fact, I have more month than I have money already. How can I take from what I don't have enough of to do something else and I'm already short over here? But thanks be to God, once you take the chance to at least trust God, then God's able to show you something you could not see when you didn't trust him. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Do, do I have anybody know what I'm talking about? You, I mean, you, you don't trust him. You don't been a tithe. You don't seen God do it and turn some stuff around for you. Amen. 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 Some of y'all holding your hand like this yet? Amen. You're in church. You can go and just raise them up if you're sure. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is so. Yeah. And so uh, uh, today, this, this whole series of lessons is really about trusting God. Yeah. The word tells us that a, a soft tongue breaks the bones. Mm -hmm. And sometimes folk fussing at you, maybe on the job, in the home, in the neighborhood, what have you. And and if you aren't careful, you just be in that bag what some of us came out of, like, they all at me? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'll be the last one they holler at. <laughs> Come on here, y'all know I know what I'm talking about. You know, they don't know me. Amen. Y'all looking all nice up in here now, but I know y'all ain't start this way. But God says, hey, soft tongue can break the bones. Amen. You and your marriage and, and things going crazy, somebody got to quiet down. Amen. 
But you got to trust God in it. Because otherwise, you'll be thinking, I ain't letting them win. <laughs> Come on here. Nobody wants to lose, right? Amen. Amen. Everybody want to feel like they came out on top. So sometimes they won't even let it go because they got to get the last word in. Amen. Who am I talking about? <laughs> they got to get the last word in. So they're going to go back and forth, back and forth. And the Lord lets us know, hey, sometimes all you just need to do is just quiet down, talk soft. You can win. Amen. But that doesn't make much sense the way we generally think. It's like, no, I can holler loud and they can holler. But the, the loudness of your argument doesn't make it any stronger. Amen. And I'll tell you first, personally, I don't believe y'all to be arguing anyway. Amen. No, I really don't. And I'll tell you why. Because my description of an argument is I want you to hear me. I'm not trying to hear you. Mm. So if you come to the that that supposed to be communication of I want you to hear me I'm not trying to hear you and they come with I want you to hear me I'm not trying to hear you then nobody's going to get anywhere because you're not trying to hear each other Amen. Amen. so now if we want to get somewhere somebody's going to have to be quiet so I can hear what you're saying and then we can do like the scripture says, God speaking through Isaiah said, let us reason together. Yeah. Let, let's talk about it. Let me hear your point. Let me hear your point. Okay, go ahead. Make your point. Make your point. Make your point. Okay, go ahead. Let me see. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Oh, oh, I didn't know that's what you were saying. This is what I thought you were saying. The whole thing just went away. Or you get to share your point. And they say, oh, oh, that's what you were saying. Oh, okay, okay. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Are you hearing today? But it's time to cross over. We can't stay where we've been when God got some other place he want to take us. Do you know there's giftings and anointings on your life that need to come forth? But in order for us to get to come forth, we have to trust God more? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hello, somebody. We haven't maximized in life yet. God got other places he want to take us. There's other things he want to show us. There's more he want to do in us and through us. But we got to cross over. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Ah, yes, Lord. Yes. Crossing over and changing my address. Amen. Changing my address from what? From an internal focus to a kingdom focus. All right, all yeah. right. From ignorance to being knowledgeable. From being a spectator to being a participator. Yeah. There are some folk who've been in church since, I mean, from birth, and yet they are 35, 40 years old, and still they are spectating. They're not involved in their church. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Don't let that be your story. Amen. No, God didn't bring you here for nothing. For you to sit. I mean, e even the pews, they do their job. Yeah. <laughs> you supposed to do yours. Come on, they home. I'm looking at y'all. Y'all sitting pretty good. Everybody look comfortable. I mean, you at ease. Okay, they doing this. How many understand? God got to work for all of us. Amen. 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 It is so. It's time to. Okay, a few of y'all got it. Amen. Let me try that again. I think we can get some more in there. It's time to. Yes, and change your address. Amen. Meaning, I'm not going to be where I used to be. I crossed over, but I'm staying over. I'm changing my address. The Lord said, you shall possess the land and dwell therein. If you're going to dwell, to dwell is to live, to abide. So if I'm going to abide here and I don't cross over Jordan, that means I change my address from that side to this side. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm, I'm excited about what I'm going to see in the days ahead that God's doing in your life already. Amen. Hallelujah. I say I'm, I'm excited. Amen. I see good things happening already. Amen. How many believe God got some good stuff for you? Amen. How many want to give God more than what you've been giving him? Amen. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I'm just going to give y'all a long distance high five. Amen. Glory, glory, amen. glory. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Said this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. Amen. Uh, Isaiah 119. Isaiah 119. Actually, let's go to Isaiah 117. Let's go to Isaiah 117. Isaiah 117. Now, we don't start out on the right foot. We have to get on the right foot or the good foot, as they say. The first part of the scripture says, learn, King James Version, to do well. Some of us have learned some other stuff. So now we have to unlearn some stuff, reprogram our computers, as it were, Amen. To do it God's way. He said, learn to do well. <laughs> Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. And plead for the widows. God said, I want you to be thinking about more than yourself. Amen. We ought to be concerned about those around us. Amen. Concerned about those in our community. Those who can't help themselves. Hello, somebody. Amen. You may know a family. They're struggling right now. Maybe got, you know, a few different little children around the house. You might be able to be a blessing to somebody. Amen. Just learn to do well. Learn to care. It's noteworthy how many folk see folk on the street and feel like everybody is after some drugs. That's not everybody's story. And, and a lot of folk who are homeless and on the street right now didn't start out like that. And for some, it had nothing to do with them. It was no fault of their own. It's not like they just messed up and, you know, got out of line. No, no, no. There are some folk who had situations, had, had businesses, and they were doing good. But as tough as we are and as resilient as we are, we're quite fragile at the very same time. A, a, a certain thing can happen in a person's life and they could have bounced back from all kinds of tragedies but a certain thing can happen it can ground them like powder that they never recover from Amen. you don't know a person's story Amen. and the Bible tells us to be careful how we entertain strangers for some have entertained angels unaware many times that could be your act this point to a blessing God has for you but because they don't seem to fit the profile that some folk have one might pass them by but I want to encourage you today to endeavor to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit let God lead there's a lot of folk on the tape now I promise you there are yeah, everybody that hold up a sign will work for food don't need food amen there are some folk who live very well with their little sign. Yes, I mean, that's their job. Amen. And they live very well. Nice houses, drive nice cars, and they put on their uniform to come out with their little shingle. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> come on here. Y'all know I know what I'm talking about. Amen. But then there are some others. And, and see, see, here's the, the thing. I, I, uh, years ago, we used to have a program called FAM. It stood for Feed a Meal Ministry. And, and we would feed folk from all over the city that came to our location every Thursday night, a complete hot dinner meal with dessert and, and everything. And uh, uh, there were some folk came to me. They said, well, well, Pastor, they, they, they don't even need it. You know, some folk, they came in because the needy and the greedy, they show up at the same places. Amen. Amen, they do. And I determined I wasn't going to miss ministering to the needy trying to weed out the greedy. Amen. Amen. That's right. No, no, I... I I'm just going to do what God gave me to do. That's really up to him. He can work. He know who's needy and who's greedy. That's yeah. right. Amen. That's right. Huh? Mm -hmm. If he ain't want them there or want me to serve them, he had to have them come there. He could have set them right. someplace else. That's right. Right? That's right. So I wasn't going to miss 
trying to figure out who is who and what's what. No, no. Just let me go ahead and show the love of the Father and, and trust God in the whole matter. And I'm telling you, we had a desire to feed folk. Didn't have anything to start with except our heart. God caused everything we needed to show up. Our food showed up. Pots, pans showed up. Equipment showed up. People showed up. I mean, everything just showed up. Didn't cost us anything. Sometimes all you need is a desire, but we got to cross over. Yes, 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 yes. God wants Ark of Jesus to make impact, favorable impact in the city and beyond. Amen. We have been doing it, and we're going to continue to do it because we're going to walk in our assignment. Amen. 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 Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. And I'll tell you, we can do more together than we can do apart. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you know when you sow in the ark of Jesus ministry, let me let me just talk about that a little bit because you know one of the one of the indictments against the church is uh folks say the church isn't doing anything. Yeah. That's one of the indictments against the church. They said, you know, they always asking for money and then the preacher drive around in the big Cadillac or the Mercedes and what have you. And they live in the fine house and then you got folk, they catching the bus to get to church. What is the church doing for the folk? Let me see if I can touch on just a little bit of it. And, and let me just bring it here because I, I can tell you something about Ark of Jesus Ministries, all right? Amen. Now, before I go there, I'm telling you now, I'm expecting some blessings of God where I'm going to drive a nicer car than I've ever had. Amen. Live in a nicer house than I've ever had. Amen. And I, I don't need your money to do it, and I'm not asking for your money to do it. Y'all don't know the depth of my sacrifice. Amen. I'm going into 38 years of senior pastoral ministry. I've been a double or a five-figure giver for I don't know how many years. Bless God. Bless God. Hello, somebody. Jesus. Yeah, anyway, it ain't come from the church. Amen. Hello, just thought I'd throw that in. Amen. Amen. Just, just thought I'd throw that in. Yes. Yeah, I expect to live good. Right. I expect the blessings of God on my Amen. life. Amen. 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 And, and, and I don't know why some folks start tripping when it comes to a pre. Well, there's some Preachers, I guess they call some trips. But anyway, um, yeah. the folks start tripping when it comes to the church. But we don't mind the movie star, the basketball, the athletes and all them. I mean, they live big and, you know, we, we, oh, man, yeah, 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 we brag on them. Get around the church, it's like they want the preacher pole mouth. <laughs> Here he is, serving God, giving you words for life. Amen. Right? Amen. So let me just tell you about the ark. God has used us. We have had youth conferences. Amen. We have done peer mediations with neighbors. Yeah. Not at this location. We just got here. We have Thanksgiving, Christmas dinners extravagances, giving away bicycles and toys and all kinds of things, do community stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, we have, y'all help me, y'all know all the stuff we've been doing. Huh? Scholarship programs. Amen. We, we done gave, let's see, last year we gave four $500 scholarships out. This year we'll give four uh, $600 scholarships out. The year before that, four $400 scholarships. The year before that, four $300 scholarships. And we're working toward $1,000 scholarships. Amen. And this is given to sixth graders. Amen. Ah. Help me read. We're tutoring right now over 200 students at 17 school. Then we have another number of students at 45 school that we tutor right now through Celebration of Life community. We have community connection meetings where people have gotten housing, health care, free and reduced prescriptions, uh, uh, 
jobs and scholarships on multiple levels. Hello, somebody. I'm, I'm telling you, there are so many resources around that folk don't know anything about. We've had an outfit come through. They were looking for young ladies who uh, were in a mother's way. They had dropped out of high school, and they were going to have their child between July 1 and December 31 that year. But these young ladies they were looking for, they wanted somebody that wanted to get their life together. For the young ladies they identified, they helped them get their GED, paid for them to have an associate's degree at MCC absolutely free. I'm telling you today, God has used this ministry significantly in a host of different ways. God used us to lead the National Day of Prayer. This will be our eighth year National Day of Prayer initiative here in Rochester. The Global Impact Saturday. I'm believing God for over 750 million souls around the world to come to Christ. I'm telling you, we're not just sitting around doing nothing. No, your investment here is an investment in the kingdom of the resurrected Christ. Amen. It is so. And that's not all. We do a professionally speaking program, a personal development tracks program. We've had, oh God, in fact, what I think I'll do is we'll write something up so y'all can see some of what happens at your church. Amen. How about that? Amen. Amen. God has blessed us. Doctors, judges, yes. the mayor, Amen. we've had our last four mayors at our meetings and I, I'm telling you, God has favored our ministry. Amen. Amen. Hello. Even now, every first Tuesday of the month, I'm over at a school and we're praying with the principal, walking through all the halls, praying over the, the children. And at 17 school, God has caused that school to come out of receivership. There's no program in the school touching as many lives as we're touching. Are you hearing today? To God be the glory. Yes, 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 yes. And, and, and it's time for us to cross over. Amen. And change our dress. What are we going to cross over and change our dress to with that? Amen. God wants us to do more. Amen. He wants to do more through us. There are too many children failing in our school system. Amen. Amen. We're talking next generations here. We have to help our next generation. Somebody said our, our youth make up about 20% of the population. I don't know how accurate that is. But what I know is that they make up 100% of our future. And if we miss it with our children, we miss it big. And I say, that's not going to happen on my watch. I'm going to do the part what God wants me to do. Can I count on you? Can we stand together and just do this? Hallelujah. Let's see some stuff turn around. I believe Rochester can be the premier city to live in, work in, and visit. But it will not happen by accident. It will only happen on purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe God wants to show himself mighty. God just wants somebody who will stand up that he can work through. Listen, when Goliath was taunting the children of Israel and the armies defying the army of the living God, I believe while all these valiant men, these men of war, these men who they knew warfare, many of them that grew up in it and what have you, while they were cowering back and not wanting to face Goliath, God wanted to just show himself mighty. He wanted somebody that has some heart that'll say, God, I'll stand for you. And David was the man that had the heart. God used David to bring Goliath down. David was said just to be a child. He wasn't even a man of war. But what David knew is David knew that God brought him through. David knew that God was with him on the backside of the mountain. David knew God called the lion and the bear to be destroyed at his hands. And he said, if God can use me back there, God can use me right here. And just like the bear went down, It doesn't matter how big the challenge is. Yes. Our God is bigger. Amen. I said our God is bigger. Amen. Yes, he is. For there's nothing too hard for God. Amen. The Bible said all things are possible to him that believeth. 
Can you believe that God will use you significantly? Some of you, I perceive that you want to talk to young people, but you don't know if they will listen to you. Let me tell you, if God put it in your heart, then God has already prepared them to hear from you. Amen. Amen. I'm not asking you that. I'm declaring it to you. I'm telling you that. Glory. And I want to say to some of y'all grandmothers and older folk, you say, well, you know, I would talk to them, but them young folk don't want to hear nobody. Do you realize that a lot of young folk really want to hear from somebody who cares? Amen. Amen. They really do. Amen. Amen. And somebody said, sometime you have to dig through the dirt to get the gold. Amen. Needs these children, they're like gold, they're like diamonds. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you may have to put up with a little something that you don't particularly want to put up with on the front side. But if you'll do it, you'll see God show Himself mighty. Amen. It's not our time is our time is winding down, but let me just share a few a few passages with you in Isaiah. Isaiah uh, chapter 3 verse 10 and I'm going to read these kind of quick um, but in Jeremiah I mean pardon me Isaiah 3 and 10 scripture says say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him for they shall eat the fruit of their doing in other words God said I'm going to bless what you do that encourages me today the Bible says, whatsoever I do should prosper. Amen. Yes. Psalms 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. Yes. And he shall be like a tree yes. planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. When I've done verse 1 and verse 2, then verse 3 belongs to me. And part of verse 3 to me is, I'm going to be fruitful, and that whatever I do, God said it would prosper. So when I, when, I, when I approach something, I'm not going into it expecting it to fail. No, because I got God's word on it. He said it would prosper. Amen. Jesus. Amen. You and I, we have to take this word and, and apply this word. It can't just be one we talk about. It has to be one we make application of. There in Isaiah 30 and 19, 30 and 19. 30 and 19. Listen. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. God says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. Out of you is going to come that, that heart of thanksgiving. Listen, everything I just spoke to you about, to God be the glory. He's the one who really does it all. I didn't really do a thing. You don't really do a thing. What really happened, this is my sound conviction, is that God does it, but he put us out front and make us look good. Amen. Amen. Folk give us accolades. It's like, I'm so glad. I don't know what I would have done if you weren't here. And that make us feel pretty good, but the reality is, it's all God. Somebody say it's all God. Come on, say it's all God. Hallelujah, it's all God. It's all God. It's all God. Listen, listen. Oh my God, I'm. I gotta close it up. I gotta close it up. I gotta close it up. Amen. Crossing over and changing my address. I know today. That there are precious ones who said, I want to get it together with God. I want to give him more than what I've been giving him. There's some in here who used to give him, I mean, everything. But somehow, through time, something has changed. And some folks say, well, I, I want to get back to where I once was. I, I, I know I was doing what I should have been doing and and I, I've kind of gotten off point with, for that, but, but I want to get back. I'm going to tell you today, 
That's what God wants for you. That's God's will for you. Don't give up. Don't let the enemy challenge your mind and say, well, no, you done missed it. Now you missed your opportunity. The devil is a liar. He never wants you, me, or anybody else to walk in God's purpose and plan for our lives. But I'm telling you, the Father is saying, come on, come on. Listen, God seems to Seen all of our slip ups, our faults, our failures, our shortcomings before we ever made the shortcoming, before we ever made the mistake. God's seen it all and He didn't change His mind about you. Amen. No, He loves you today with the same love He loved you with when He first called you, when He first ordained you. You said, Wait a minute, ordained? I, 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 I ain't gonna ordain. Oh, yes, you are. Yeah, before you showed up in your mama's belly, God already had an assignment for you. Hello, somebody? Y'all look quiet in here. Y'all receive this word to you later? Amen. Yes, Amen. Lord. Okay, all right. Y'all talk back to me. <laughs> Amen. God didn't change his mind about you at all. I don't care how many times you messed up. He did not change his mind about you, and he's not going to. It's just our part to rise up and do what he wants us to do. Amen? Amen. At this time, we're getting ready to pray. And I'm going to pray for you right where you are. I'm not going to ask you to come up here. I'm not going to ask you a name or anything like that. Some of the things that I love about the Lord is the fact that the Bible tells us he searches your heart. Amen. So whether other folk see, know, or understand doesn't really matter because God does. Yes. He sees, he knows, he understands, and he cares. And so right where you are, you say, well, you know, Bishop, I, I heard what you said today and about that piece about trusting and liking God. I, I heard that uh, I've seen the illustration of trust and just kind of doing a free fall in God's hand. I've seen that. So I, I really want to give God more, but I, I, I don't know how good I'm going to do with all of that. Well, as with anything, you commonly do better as you do. You, 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 you grow in things. Yes. Are you with me? And the Bible tells us not to compare ourselves among ourselves because it's not wise. Amen. Amen. So don't look at your brother or your sister and say, boy, I, I wish I was like that, but since I'm not like that, let me just sit out. No, no, no. Because your brother and your sister didn't start out looking like what they look like right now. Amen. No, no, they worked up to that. And you'll work up to whatever God has for you. Amen. And he can cause your resume to be rewritten to where down the road you're talking with folk about your life. And they're like, you? Huh? I, I just can't picture you. No, just I, I just can't picture it. Why? Because you will have changed so much. Amen. But you've got to start somewhere. Amen. The journey of a mile. Starts with the first step. Are you hearing? Amen. And I pray today that you're resolving that God, I'm crossing over yeah. and I'm changing my address. Amen. It shall not be as it has been. Amen. It will not continue as it has been. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Those of you in Facebook land, listen, this word is for you as well. And I'm appealing to you to hear what is God saying to you. God wants you to trust him. God wants you to trust him. Or you might be hid from me by way of a camera. You might even get this delayed a week later, a month later, whatever the timeline, doesn't matter. God afforded you to hear this word on purpose and for purpose. And so, as I ask now, those of you who say, well, would you include me in the prayer? I, I don't know Jesus, but I want to know him. 
Would you include me in the prayer? I just want to know who I'm praying for. So if that's you, just lift your hand. Yes, would you include me in the prayer? I want Jesus in my life. Would you include me in the prayer? All over the sanctuary. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Others say, well, I, I, it's not about me knowing him. I, I know him all right. I've been in the church for a long time. I grew up in the church and I used to sing in the choir and I used to do this, that, and the other, but along the way, things have changed and I'm I'm not doing like I know I should be doing. Would you pray for me? I, I want to get back on it. I want to do it better than I'm doing it right now. Would you include me in the prayer? Yes, I see your hand over there. Glory to God. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said, yes, I, I, I just want to do it better. I, I don't want to stay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Glory to God. I don't want to stay in the same predicament. Yes, ma'am. I see your hand there. Glory to God. I don't want to stay in the same predicament. I want to cross over. I want to change my address. I want to represent God better in the days ahead than I have in the days past. Would you include me in the prayer? Hallelujah. Are there others today? Are there others? My God. My last appeal, my last appeal today is for membership. You say, well, I'm, I'm not a member of a church but I want to be a member of a church. Now, let me just make this clear to you. If you are a member of a church, I'm not asking you to come and be a member here. No, if you have membership somewhere, then you just go there and serve faithfully. You can accept Christ in your life. You can even be prayed for and be uh, rededicated to Christ and all of that. And then just go to your own church and serve faithfully. Amen. Just, just serve faithfully. But if you do not have a church home, then certainly I would love to be your pastor. I believe that God will use me instrumentally, strategically, and pivotally in your life to help you walk out your God-given purpose. I believe that God will use this ministry to help you grow in your faith. So if that's you today, you say, yeah, I need a church home. Would you include me in the prayer? Amen. Yes, sir, I see your hand. Glory to God. Are there others today? You said, I'm not, I'm not in the church, but I want to be. Would you include me in the prayer? Yes, ma'am. I see your hand. Glory to God. Are there others today? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Believers should be praying at this time. If you would, let's just bow our heads together. Father, thank you so very much that you would love us enough as to send us your word today. And then illuminate truths of your word at the level of our understanding. Thank you, dear God, for the powerful gift of the Holy Spirit that makes us that makes the complex simple, oh God. Thank you for these, your precious people that have ears to hear and hearts which have received your word today, God. Thank you for those who say they don't want to be the same, but God, they want to change. They want to cross over. They want to change their address, God. They want to be in that place that honors you more and glorifies you best. Thank you for those that said, I desire church home. Would you include me in the prayer? Father, I just give you glory now for each and every one of them. I thank you for the plan that you have for their life. I thank you, Lord God, that the best of these, your people, is yet manifesting. I thank you, Lord God, that the barriers that have stood before them and between them walking in greater alignment with you shall not hinder them anymore. But God, that more and more their intimacy with you grows from this day forward. Thank you, Lord God. And now I ask everyone to repeat after me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, ask you now I ask you now to forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness that I might be yours. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Occupy the throne of my heart from this day forward. In Jesus' mighty name, I accept you as my own. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on and just bless the Lord in the house today. My God. Just bless the Lord in the house today. My God. I'll tell you, we are on our way someplace good, church. 
We're on our way someplace good. Uh, to those of you in Facebook land, amen, if you're in the area, come and visit. If you can't visit us physically, send us a comment. Let us know uh, your prayer request. We can cover your matter together in prayer. We know that nothing is too hard for God, and prayer knows no distance. Amen. It'll reach across the street, across the country, and around the globe. Amen. Amen prayer knows no distance. Amen. Also, I want you to know you have the liberty to sow into this ministry. Uh, feel free to do that. You can go right to our website. That's arcofjesusministries.com. That's A-R-K-O-F-J-E-S-U-S M-I-N-I-S-T-R-I-E-S and you can visit with us online there. Amen. The Lord bless you. God love you. God keep you is my prayer. Come on, let's put our hands together and give the Lord a praise. Amen, amen, and amen. Now, um, we're looking forward to being here in, what, about another couple, three hours, four hours. Amen. In about four hours, we'll be back here for our uh, service. Amen. Uh, for our three o'clock service today, and um, um, Minister Singleton, who was the one on the ladder, and uh, I think he did a good job. I think he did a good job. I think he did a good job. I think all our men did a good job. Come on, let's give my hand. Amen. In fact, on their way to their seats, uh, Raheem said he want to do it next time. <laughs> Raheem, stand up. Let them see who I'm talking about. <laughs> Amen. Y'all men, make sure you bring your muscles. Bring your muscles. Amen. Amen. But we thank God for each and every one of you. Uh, at this time, I'm going to release it into the hands of Elder Elaine Adams. My wife and I will greet you all on the other side of the door. God bless you. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Praise God. Praise God. Thank God for the word that has come forth today for, through God, through our pastor, for us. And we just ask you to keep all the announcements in mind. We ask you to prepare yourselves to come back this afternoon. We ask you also to prepare yourselves to go out next week, Sunday afternoon. The church, our Amen. Jesus Ministries, we go out to another body of Christ on next week afternoon. We ask you to prepare to do that. We're going to be doing greater things, more things, amen, because we don't have to, um, when, we, when we come in, we know that when we come into this place, <laughs> it's all set and all ready for us, amen. And we just thank God for what he's doing. Thank God for each and every one of you. And as the pastor said, if you want to be involved in anything in the church, just let us, you know, Speak to any of the leaders. The doors are open. Our arms are open. We need more folks on praise and worship. We need more folks in choir. And we need folks in, on the usher board. So the opportunity is yours to serve Christ and for you to grow in him. Amen. Um, the ushers will, they have your um, finance statements from Ark of Jesus Ministries. She has it in the back as you go out. On this this morning and um, if our hearts and minds are clear at this time we're going to stand to be dismissed our benediction is coming from 2nd Thessalonians 2nd chapter the 16th through the 17th verse if you repeat after me now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which has loved us and has given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Amen. See you at the next appointed time. God bless you.